I, I cannot emphasize this enough. I know these might be your favorite food, but they are causing cognitive decline and they are causing obesity and this has to stop. So here's the thing. I always say that this may not be your fault, but it is your responsibility. Have you ever wondered how much your daily food choices are affecting your brain? What if I told you that just one slice and a half of pizza a day could boost your risk of dementia by 28%? Sounds alarming, right? Meet Dr. Mindy Pels, a highly regarded holistic health expert and a prominent advocate for women's health education, who is committed to sparking a revolution in women's health. Through her guidance, she has empowered hundreds of thousands globally to tap into their body's natural healing powers through fasting, dietary changes, detoxification, stress management, and lifestyle adjustments. And with her professional insight, in this video, we'll delve into these most harmful foods that damage your brain and may even contribute to cancer. As always, we'll explore the scientific evidence behind these common foods, and more importantly, share strategies to protect your brain and promote a healthier, longer life. With that said, the first foods to avoid for brain health discussed by Dr. Mindy are bad fats and oils. Oils are fats that remain liquid at room temperature, such as the vegetable oils commonly used in cooking. They are derived from various plants and fish and supply essential nutrients like unsaturated fats and vitamin E. However, some oils that are high in unhealthy fats can cause chronic inflammation in the body, including the brain. This inflammation may lead to several neurological issues, such as cognitive decline, mood disorders, and even neurodegenerative diseases. Bad fat inflame your brain. Now I know for whatever reason, there is like massive controversy over things like seed oils. Um, again, it's always how these oils are processed. So the more quicker that they are processed and made like canola oil and cottonseed oil and corn oil and um, vegetable oil, soybean oil, partially hydrogenated oils, those oils tend to be made very, very quickly. They're broken down there's not a lot of nutrients in it. When we eat them, they're inflammatory. And that means they can also inflame the brain. Well, your brain is literally swelling every time you're eating bad oils. It's like, and how could you think right? The brain's job is to coordinate everything in the body. It's to give you great mental clarity, but you're not going to think right if you're eating these inflammatory oils. What's more is one major reason why these oils are so detrimental and must not be overlooked is their widespread presence in today's diets, especially in fast foods and restaurant dishes. Although they are often chosen for their low cost and long shelf life, these advantages come at the cost of your brain health. Each time you dine out, you risk consuming these inflammatory oils. So how can you reduce this risk and support your brain health? The answer is to be mindful of your choices when eating out and to switch to healthier oils, as suggested by Dr. Mindy. Um, so we got to get the inflammatory oils out. What we want to do is we want to think about how do we add more good oils in? So this is your avocados. Um, these are your flaxseed. This is your MCT, your avocado oil. This is your olive oil. These are all great oils to help nourish the brain. The second foods to avoid mentioned by Dr. Mindy Pels are refined flours, often found in white bread, pastries, among others, which might appear harmless at a glance but their impact on brain health is both profound and insidious, mainly because the refining process removes much of the flour's natural nutrients, leaving behind a product that contributes to more than just empty calories. Thing I want you to avoid, worst food for your brain, are the refined flours. Now, same reason, when they think about this, I'm really a fan, if you're gonna do a grain, do an ancient grain. Because an ancient grain has enzymes in it, it's sprouted, it has um, some, if you do like a sourdough, it's fermented, it has some good probiotics in it. Um, there's nutrients there. But when I walk into my grocery store and I look at some bread and all of a sudden I just buy the, the bread that was the, my bread I've been eating since childhood, let's say, um, what we know is that if it's been highly refined, A, the actual process of making that refined flour took all the nutrients out. So there's, it's nutrient dead. Think about that for a moment. Like literally your sandwich you're eating or the bread you're having in the morning that's like that traditional refined flour, it has no nu nutrients in it. It's not going to do anything for your brain. Moreover, the low fiber content of refined flours means they don't support the gut-brain axis effectively. A healthy gut microbiome plays a crucial role in producing neurotransmitters and maintaining mental health. When you consume refined flours, you miss out on the fiber necessary to feed beneficial gut bacteria which in turn can affect neurotransmitter production and contribute to mood disorders and cognitive issues. 
Additionally, white flour is a high glycemic food with a glycemic index of 85 out of 100, which means it can rapidly increase blood glucose levels, a risk factor for dementia and cognitive decline. One study found that consuming highly refined foods such as white bread is associated with a higher risk of developing colorectal cancer. So in essence, while refined flours might be a staple in many diets, their lack of nutrients and negative impact on blood sugar and gut health make them a significant concern for brain and overall health. However, choosing healthier alternatives like sourdough or ancient grains as recommended by Dr. Mindy allows you to enjoy tasty bread while opting for less processed choices. These options are richer in vitamins, minerals, and fiber, which can enhance cognitive function and support mental well-being, promoting a sharper and healthier mind. The third type of food Dr. Mindy advises avoiding is processed foods, which are those that have been altered from their natural state through various methods. Although processed foods are convenient, they can negatively impact brain health because extensive processing usually includes the addition of additives, preservatives, which will be discussed shortly, and unhealthy ingredients such as added sugars, harmful fats, and high levels of sodium. Moreover, these foods are typically low in essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, which, as mentioned earlier, are crucial for gut health and, in turn, brain function. So here we go. Here's what the 2024 meta-analysis said, is that for every 10% increase in an ultra-processed food, the risk of dementia went up by 14%. So for every increase in uh, potato chips, in, and I'll go, I'm gonna go through these in a moment, in soda, in, uh, in white bread, hot dogs, for every 10% increase of your diet in these toxic foods, you have a 14% increase of getting dementia. Now let's break this down. So this is really good. I, I, I love so you can see this, if that if you eat, the standard diet of 2,000 calories a day, just 400 of those calories coming from pot processed foods. So that is about a slice and a half of pizza, and you would increase your risk of dementia by 28% from one slice and a half of pizza. Every single day, you increase your chance of dementia by 28%. Now it's not just pizza, it is cereal, dad, it's cereal. The cereal you're having for breakfast. The cereal with the orange juice for breakfast that we think is healthy is causing dementia. So things like our salad dressings and ketchups, these are ultra processed foods that have so many chemicals in it, have so much sugar in it, that it is literally f affecting our cognitive brain. So, and, and by a large amount, 28%, if just 400 of your calories every day comes from this crap, that affects how you think. This, there is no worthy exchange. There is no delight in a potato chip that would allow me to lose my cognitive abilities by 28%. Additionally, a large study of over 100,000 adults revealed that consuming 10% more ultra-processed foods was linked to a more than 10% higher risk of cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, and cerebrovascular conditions. In essence, these common foods may not only be impacting your waistline, but also silently harming your brain and cardiovascular health. However, not all hope is lost. Referring back to the 2024 meta-analysis mentioned by Dr. Mindy, there is indeed a positive side to it. Here's another thing, a way of looking at this, is that the authors of this meta-analysis, they estimated that for every 50 grams of processed foods, if you replace with unprocessed foods, you would reduce your risk of dementia by 3%. So if you were to replace your breakfast sausage that has nitrites in it, and you replace that with an egg, maybe you take your juice, and instead of drinking the juice, you actually have the actual fruit itself, then now you have lowered your chances of dementia by 3%. Isn't that amazing? In addition to replacing processed foods with whole foods, Dr. Mindy also suggests incorporating a variety of vegetables into our diet. She is a proponent of the keto diet, which has been found to help with the early stages of dementia. 
So the first step is get the Cokes out, the Coke Zero, the Diet Cokes, also chemical laden. Let's get them out so we can get cognitive health back to you and your loved ones. Then let's load up our diet with things like lots of vegetables. They're full of fiber. Fiber will help make sure that your glucose doesn't get too high. So think lots of fiber. Let's think lots of healthy fats. So this is your olive oils and your avocado oils um, and your grass-fed butter. I know for somebody who's been using margarine, which also is an ultra-processed food, it's maybe a far cry to go into grass-fed butter, but we've got to look at going back to the real authentic food. Get out of your grocery store. Go to your farmer's market. The grocery stores where the more mainstream grocery stores is where all of this crap lives. I'm such a fan of the keto diet. And I know the keto diet has kind of come and gone and there's been some, some um, people who say, well, you know, I want my carbs, have nature's carbs. The keto diet is a healing diet. It will help you lose weight. It'll help you lose body fat. It will bring your blood sugar down and it will help dementia. So if you don't believe me, let me tell you a beautiful study, a 2022 study found that the keto diet reduced brain inflammation and lowered the risk of neurodegenerative disease in aging people with the signs of early dementia. So the key takeaway here is to first recognize the hidden dangers of highly processed foods, as we have, and use this knowledge to make informed dietary choices and take massive action to protect the cognitive function and overall health of you and your loved ones. And this brings us to the fourth type of foods Dr. Mindy recommends avoiding for a healthy brain, this includes those containing natural flavors and artificial dyes. But before we dive in, let me ask you, how often do you check the ingredient list on food products before buying them? If your answer is, I don't, then it's time to pay close attention. But if you are someone who does read the ingredient list, well done, I'm proud of you. I hope you teach your loved ones to do the same and share this video with them. However, keep in mind that not all the ingredients listed always reflect what is truly in the food or product you're purchasing. For instance, the term natural flavors might sound wholesome, but it can be a cover for a cocktail of synthetic chemicals. These additives often contain compounds that can act as neurotoxins. What makes this particularly alarming is that natural flavors do not have to disclose the specific chemicals used, leaving consumers unaware of the potential dangers. In fact, here is Dr. Mindy's insight on this. The number one thing you wanna look for in an ingredient list that's the most harmful is the word natural flavor. So natural flavors is code for, let me put a lot of toxins together in one ingredient la label and I don't have to disclose what those toxins are. So many of them are things like MSG, which can cause the brain to go into hyper, a hyper stimulation. One of the things they put in natural flavors are dopamine stimulators so that you're addicted to the food. Okay, think about that for a moment. It's like you're eating your favorite potato chip and you're like, I need another bag, I need another bag. You just wanna keep coming back for more. A lot of times they put a chemical in there that you become addicted to. So we wanna start to avoid things that say natural flavors in them. Now, a couple of other artificial ingredients I really encourage you to look out for are things that are like like, you know, artificial dyes, like red dye number three and red dye number four, those are gonna be toxic. They're neurotoxins for the brain. Um, and you wanna avoid them. So if you're not reading an ingredient list, make sure you're reading an ingredient list. I hope this paints a clear picture of why we keep wanting more of some of this processed food. So while these additives might enhance the sensory appeal of processed foods, their impact on brain health is far from benign. By being aware of the potential dangers of natural flavors and artificial dyes, you can make more informed choices and help protect your brain from the hidden threats lurking in everyday food products. The aim of this video is to teach us all how our daily food choices and lifestyle habits impact brain health, and how small adjustments in our diet and understanding can positively protect our brain and overall well-being. This is made possible thanks to the help of holistic insights from experts like Dr. Mindy Pels.